Our next proactive strategy, developing a family policy that supersedes everyone else's policy. I've been a trainer for a long time. I get asked a lot of questions. You know, if I'm in a fight, am I going to, I don't want the police to come and I'm going to be in a you know, police report and I could, be, I could be this and I could be that. I always tell people, if you are in any type of uh, altercation, uh, whether it's with a weapon, without a weapon, just a simple battery, uh, even a car accident, and it's not your fault, you're going to be in that police report. How would you like that police report to read? It's going to read, victim did not fight back, sustained multiple injuries, and uh, was transported to the hospital. Or, primary aggressor attacked the victim, the victim fought back in self-defense, you know, taking him down or, or, you know, making him run, whatever it is, you know, um, protecting himself. By law, you're allowed to protect yourself. But you're going to be in that police report. When it comes to schools, nowadays, they have a zero tolerance policy. Zero tolerance for schools means if you're in the situation at all, everyone's in trouble. To the degree that the primary aggressor is established, okay, the bully, he, we know that he's the bully, um, he's going to be suspended and your child will probably be suspended. And for the, the, the child that was picked on to be sitting in the principal's office with ice over his eye saying, you know what, mom and dad, are you glad, aren't you proud of me? I didn't fight back. I let him hit me first. We're going to write our own policy. So whatever is the standard in your family, whatever, you know, from parent to child that you guys agree with, remember, this is a international program and not every uh, family uh, unit believes in the same thing. Some parents are okay with their kid, you know, getting hit repeatedly and then uh, telling the principal about it later and, and not being involved in a fight at all. Remember, you can't avoid 100% of, of the physical situation. You can't get yourself out of uh, a lot of kick and punch situations nowadays. You can't just say no. You just can't run away. Sometimes you do have to take care of business. But by sitting down and communicating clearly with your family members what you're allowed to do, that goes a long way. Most children are like a deer in, a, in, in the headlights. They don't know what to do because they don't know if they're going to get in trouble at home. So they're being picked on in six period, picked on in six period, and picked on in six period. Day after day, maybe they get a little break. They tell the parents. The parents don't really have a plan. Uh, you know, the, 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 the mom and dad are, are going back and forth and upset each other because they don't know what to do. The kid doesn't know what to do. There's no clear communication as to what you are okay with. What, what are you allowed to do, little Johnny? You know, so you sit down and say, listen, under no certain, circum, you know, certain terms, uh, are you allowed to do this? But if it gets to this, we want you to do this. That's your family plan. And it supersedes all other plans because school boards and management systems, are their, their vested interest is not you and your child. Their vested interest is to just create a generic plan that they can say, hey, I told you so. If you get involved in this, everyone's in trouble. So the teacher's in-class uh, uh, policy the principal, the school board, whatever it is, if you're trying to be the best person you can, if you're on your best behavior and someone else is a primary aggressor, the family plan supersedes everything else. Because if you're telling, if you're telling me that my child's going to be in the principal's office no matter what he does, I want to give him the opportunity to keep his confidence, uh, avoid injury at all costs, and, and not let this aggressor mow him over, uh, you know, like a jackhammer. So we want to make sure that we empower our child. You sit them down and you tell them, if it gets to a situation where you can't avoid it, you can fight back. If you feel like you're going to get hit at a moment's notice and, and you're in fear for your safety, you should hit first. Or let him hit you first. Or never fight and take and take all the hits you can, um, and you know. But we'll come, and you won't be in trouble, and you can be in the principal's office and tell the story afterwards. Whatever your plan is, communicate it to your child, so they go. You know, they go in because you're you're their corner man. They come to you for guidance. Okay, you're in the corner. You, you know, you're fixing them up. You got them hydrated. You're putting the Vaseline on the forehead. You're gonna send them back into the fight. The fight being their daily life because they're in school without you, they're at the bus stop without you, they're off to college without you, you know, they're around other people without you, so they need to know the game plan and the strategy if things get out of hand. So create that plan within your family.